My art books, She's a Wildcat, The Art of Candy, and Roller Derby Girl Gang, an art anthology, are available now. Check out the link in the description to find out more. Crab Monsters, Teenage Cavemen, and Candy Stripe Nurses. Roger Corman, King of the Bee Movie. Published in 2013, this is a truly outstanding film-related book. And I say that as someone who is not a Roger Corman aficionado at all. I've seen, at most, maybe 10 movies he's had a hand in as director or producer. And though I enjoyed most of them for what they are, I can't call myself a big fan of the movies themselves, but rather a fan of the idea of B-movies, exploitation movies. I find reading about these sort of movies to be far more enjoyable than actually watching them. Because, you know, even quality aside, most of the fun and special spectacle promised in the film's titles, posters, and synopsis usually doesn't manifest on screen in the way those things might have you imagine. But anyway, I mention this so that I'm forthcoming with regards to my limitations in reviewing the book, particularly in comparing them to the many, many other books on Roger Corman that exist. But that does mean that if you too are coming to this book and wondering if it's accessible to someone with little to no prior knowledge of Roger Corman or his movies, and if it's a good place to start, then as someone who was in the same boat, I can say absolutely. All you need to enjoy this book is an appreciation and interest in B-movies and low-budget, independent filmmaking, exploitation, grindhouse, schlock, however you want to term it, as long as you have a sweet tooth for that sort of thing, even in a more general sense, and the filmmaking behind it, like myself, that's all you need. You don't even have to have seen a single one of the films to enjoy this book, but of course, if you are a huge fan of the movies themselves, then you are going to love and appreciate this book even more. I've always been interested in checking out some of the other Roger Corman related books, but the big difference with this one that finally made me pull the trigger is simply that, from a purely visual perspective, it's the first one that actually looks good. As far as I'm aware, all of the previous books on Corman either have no images or are all or predominantly in black and white, with the exception of maybe two or three that have small colour sections, but as far as I know this is the first one to use full colour throughout, which is something I find really really important, especially because of the posters which are not only the best thing about the movies, but are also the best thing about this book. Which is saying something because, even posters aside, this book is awesome, just amazingly well done. But to continue from a design perspective, as soon as you pick it up, the dust jacket has this sort of more papery, pulpy feel to it. It's not as smooth as most dust jacket paper, and it works so well with the visual aesthetic of the jacket. I love little design details like this that are otherwise completely inconsequential, but signal that someone actually put thought into implementing design decisions appropriate to the specific book they're making. The problem with using this sort of material is that it's not very durable, but very wisely, the reverse of the dust jacket isn't the same, instead it's got sort of a treated coat to combat that and make it more resistant to damage. This level of intelligence and consideration in book design is insanely rare, which is why I wanted to highlight it. The interior design, however, is a little inconsistent, um, in the sense that some pages are completely designed, done in a style that is so great and spot on for the subject matter, but then the majority of pages are just plain without any design. That's not a problem at all, it's fine, I just wonder if the book would have been even better if every page had have received the highly designed treatment. There is one actual problem with the design specifically the layout of the text, and it's the only place where this book drops the ball. It uses that layout style where the body text takes up only half the page with huge outer margins left for images and captions, but if there are no images or captions then it's just blank white space. And if the layout had been done more thoughtfully, using two columns or, or wider columns of text, there could have been maybe 20% more content in here as opposed to the blank space we're given. And having more text would have been really beneficial to a book that has to cover a career spanning over 400 movies and 60 years, but it's doubly frustrating because it's the one and only thing that prevents this book from being almost perfect as far as I'm concerned. Surprisingly, however, the book doesn't actually suffer because of it, it just would have been much better had it not done this. But now that I've mentioned it, I'm just going to ignore it for the rest of the review. Because other than that, I think the highest and most honest compliment I can give this book is that I can see a hundred mistakes this book could easily have made, but it makes not a single one of them. On paper, so many of the things this book does shouldn't work, or certainly shouldn't work as well as it does. It is genuinely remarkable how effortlessly intelligent and adroit this book is in its execution. For example, it's a huge challenge for a book like this when your subject revolves around hundreds of movies. How do you handle that? in a way that's satisfying. Well, this book does it by keeping a laser-focused through-line on what it's about.
about, and that is Roger Corman's career and what it was like to work with and for him on these movies in this sphere of low-budget filmmaking he carved out of Hollywood. That is the central idea of this book, which provides the structure that everything else in the book hangs off and services. It might sound strange to say, but the movies themselves are almost inconsequential individually, even though at any given point you're always reading about some specific story on a specific movie, which is great, but it's never for the sake of learning about the movie itself. It's there to illustrate and service that main focus of Corman's career and what it was like working within his empire. The movies themselves provide the examples to illustrate that stuff, as well as the chronological stepping stones to keep the book moving forward. Each movie flies by without any demarcation or transition, which you would think would make things far too fast and jarring and unfocused, but it doesn't. It's smooth reading. And again, that's all due to the unwavering ability to stay the course of the book's core idea and makes everything feel connected. If I had to describe this book in one or two words, it would be perfectly balanced, which is basically the biggest thing every book struggles with, but very few actually achieve. For example, another trap a lot of books like this fall into is striking the tricky balance between focusing on providing specific details which are interesting but also quite microcosmic versus information that, in an effort to cover more ground and support the thesis of the book, is too generalized to be interesting. Whereas for this book, that's never an issue. There's no struggle between the two because all of the information is specific, but all of that specific information is contributing to supporting the primary focus of the book. The author, who I haven't even mentioned yet, is Chris Nashawati. He very wisely lets the specific information about the movie provide the evidence for this larger picture of Corman's career, and I have so much appreciation of that. It means the information is constantly good and entertaining and engaging and that there's very little boring or pointless in the book. This all might sound like a kind of obvious thing for a book to do, but the fact of the matter is it almost never happens and certainly not with the sort of effortless finesse this book displays. The other reason this book's text is so successful is because of the way it's presented, and that is as an oral history made up almost entirely of quotes from the folks who have worked with slash for Corman over the years. While Roger does appear to have been very supportive of this book, his quotes are surprisingly, I would even say disappointingly, minimal, so you don't hear a lot from him personally. It's primarily everyone else's recollections of their experience making these movies, what it was like working in Corman's world. But these anecdotes do such a great job of taking you back back in time and giving you a real in-the-trenches sense of what it was like to learn the ropes in what was essentially a vocational school Roger provided for just so many people who would later go on to become major Hollywood players. And it presents such a different and wild view of making a film compared to the major studio lens we usually view filmmaking in the industry through. And so the quotes and anecdotes are another area the book absolutely shines. Hearing the stories from the people themselves about their personal experiences helps put you there in a realistic way as opposed to an author's bird's eye view. And I am glad that Chris, the author, is quite scarce in his contributions to the text, as the little he does write is in that sort of overbearing magazine style that can be quite trying. Also, occasionally, certain quotes and information are repeated up to three times in as many pages, which seems rather silly, but he keeps both these things to a minimum and otherwise clearly knows how to craft an amazing book, so no hard feelings there. Often in oral histories, and especially with a broad retrospective like this, the speaker's can be too general or too self-indulgent, and this book has none of that. Instead, it essentially and brilliantly goes in the complete opposite direction and makes sure almost everything, all the information and stories and stuff, is specific, and that's what carries the book and makes it so successful. The only exception to that is the last 15 pages, in which there's a lot more positing of general comments about Roger and the current state of things, though I suppose that's just for the sake of wrapping up. But other than that, almost every quote is providing enlightening, entertaining, engaging, specific information contributing to the core idea of capturing what it was like to work in the world of Roger Corman, which shows that the interviewees were forthcoming with providing genuinely interesting information. As someone who's conducted interviews for books, I can tell you that getting the subject to say something of actual worth can be like pulling teeth, but almost certainly the greater contributing factor responsible for this is the author's curation of the quotes, cutting out any crap and ensuring we're presented only with the cream of the crop and that the quotes are contributing to making this book a meaningful and gratifying experience for the reader. And this idea of a gratifying experience is key to the success of every book, but particularly challenging for a book like this where you have a huge subject, a filmmaker whose career spans almost 
500 movies over a 60 year period. Add to that the fact it is still only a swift overview of everything. The word count is pretty low proportional to the vast subject matter, and so even though it's full of great detail, it's still not very deep or comprehensive at all. Which that alone would make me think the book would have no chance of success no matter how good the text is, but it does wonderfully. The lack of depth doesn't matter as much as you would think, because ultimately the book still provides a rewarding experience. You will get to the end of this book and wish there was more of everything, but in the good wishful way, not in the way that makes you feel cheated or that the book is pointless or unfulfilling. This is why I heap so much praise on this book's commitment to a central idea rather than indulging in the individual movies themselves. Although that does mean that maybe the only area of potential dissatisfaction you may have is if you come to the book looking for a critical mass of information on a specific movie or movies. Some movies don't even get a mention, others might get one quote and still others might get two pages. And even though the specific information and anecdotes may contain great details about the making of one of your favourite Corman movies, you you can't come to the book with that as your goal. You have to want to read about Corman's filmmaking world overall, and if you happen to find some nuggets on a particular favourite movie within that, then that's a bonus. Another reason I'm glad this book chose to focus on presenting a more visually interesting publication on Corman's work, even if it is at the expense of having less text, is because, like I mentioned at the start, there are already tons of other books on Corman's work, which I'm now very interested in tracking down, as I suspect some of them will prove to be great supplements to this book and hopefully provide some of the depth in certain areas this book lacks. I think more well-read Corman fans will really appreciate is how well it fits into the existing literature, being a worthy Roger Corman book rather than just another Roger Corman book. Again, not having read any of the previous books, I could be very wrong about this, but based on the marketing copy and such, my understanding is that all of the interviews in here are new and exclusive to this book, rather than recycling quotes from pre-existing sources. Definitely correct me if I'm wrong about that, though I suspect the interview probably repeat stories they've told before, but the book does also claim to contain never-before-published photos and ephemera from Roger's personal archive, so it does seem like every effort has been made to make this a truly amazing and worthwhile book. I'm not going to mention any of the other Roger Corman-related books here because there are too many and I don't know enough about them, but if you want to find out what's available, check out the Roger Corman page on the Art and Making of website, which contains a comprehensive listing of all the previously published Roger Corman-related books.